Let's bow our heads just a moment before we sit down. Blessed Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the privilege that we have of coming together again to speak of thy goodness and kindness to thy children. We are grateful for this, and we pray that you will manifest your love to us tonight in a most unusual way. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. And be seated. I wish to read tonight from the Word of God, the, the twelfth chapter of St. Matthew, the forty-second verse. And the Queen of the South shall rise up in the day of judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. I wish to use for a text tonight, God manifesting his gifts. Jesus had just been in conflict with the religious world of that day. He had been perceiving their thoughts, and they had accused him of being uh, empowered with Beelzebub, a uh, demon. And Jesus had strictly charged them, saying that he would forgive them for that sinful act that they had committed. But he also warned them that the time would come when the Holy Spirit would do the same act. And one word against it would never be forgiven in this world or in the world to come. What a solemn warning it was to those people of that day and to the people of this day. And they had asked him for a sign. After that, they said, Master, we seek a sign from thee. And he said to them, A weak and adulterous generation seeks after signs, and no sign shall be given unto them except the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas the prophet was in the belly of the whale, Three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the bosom of the earth. Three days and three nights. Therefore, according to the sign that Jesus left for this world, would be the sign of his resurrection, would be the everlasting sign that he gave. Now, God in all ages, at all times, has never been without a witness. God's always had a witness. And never at any time was his witness ever received by the, the ecclesiastical system of the world. Never in no age. And never in no age did the ecclesiastical system of the world ever produce a servant of God that was used in that manner. Think of it. In the history of time, never did the religious systems of this world ever receive a servant sent from God. And never did the religious systems of this world ever produce a product that God used internationally in a great way. Never. God picks his man himself. How it is in the days of Moses, the prophet, how that Moses was born a servant of the Lord and was raised up in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. He was a polished scholar. 
And when he had mastered all the wisdom and the learning of the Egyptians, it seems like that he had been in wonderful condition to deliver his people. For he was the commanding general in all Egypt. He was an heir to the throne. And every right of education that a man could receive, Moses had it. But God could not use one of those qualities. And we find him taking his servant Moses to the backside of the desert to herd his father-in-law Jethro's sheep. And a man who had been raised with the Egyptians, and we know according to the Genesis, that a sheep herder was an abomination in the sight of God. In the very things that he had been taught not to do, he went to do it. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit or understand spiritual things. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And the wisdom of God is so much higher than the wisdom of man until the wisdom of man is considered not our foolishness before God. And there we find God taking his servant and keeping him forty years to take out of him all of the scholarship that Egypt put in him. God had to take it all out of him. And it had taken him just as many years to take it out of him as it did for Egypt to put it in him. Then we find him one day herding his father-in-law's sheep coming down an old familiar path, and all of a sudden his attention was attracted to some great phenomenon. That was a bush that was burning with fire and was not consumed. And Moses never questioned the bush as we would today. He just drew aside and walked up to it and wanted to find out what was going on. And when he approached it reverently, God spoke to him. And when we approach God in the same manner, God will speak to us. But never in a critical way can we approach God and expect God to speak back to us. We've got to approach Him in a reverent way. Perhaps what if Moses would have said, being that I am raised up as a scientist, and as a master in Egypt and have mastered all their arts, I will wait and find out when the fire goes off the bush. Then I'll take some of the leaves and take it to the laboratory and find out just why those leaves did not burn. What kind of a chemical was on those leaves that would not burn and that great heat? If he would have approached it in that standpoint in a scientific research, God would have never spoke to him. That's the reason today that people does not get along with God as they should is because they're trying to scientifically prove everything. And God is never known by science. You, if you can prove God, then it's no more an act of faith. You cannot prove God by science. You've got to accept Him by faith. Therefore, Moses drew up with a willing heart to understand. And God spoke to Moses and said, Take off your shoes. For the ground that you stand on is holy ground. 
Moses removed his shoes and God talked to Moses. Moses learned more five minutes time in the presence of that fire than he had learned in 40 years of education. He knew more about God five minutes in the presence of that light than he did in 40 years of studying and schooling. How his mother had taught him that he was to be the emancipator of Egypt. All these things that have been taught by his mother and by teachers and by schools. Yet he knew more about God in five minutes in the presence of that light. Now, I believe today that if the teacher would go into the presence of God instead of so much schooling and trying to twist and to make it fit certain theologies, just go in the presence of God and you'll learn about God. And then we find after that, that Moses was willing. What Moses lacked, the burning bush had. And what we lack in our church, the Holy Spirit has for us. But God had his man, and he called him. And educated him and hand-picked him. And how much better is he that's going to use the vessel, know how to form the vessel, than it would be for some man, human hands and human intelligence cannot pick the servant of God. God has to do that alone. And through all ages, God has had a witness. He's never been without a witness. In the days before the Antiluvian, he had Noah. He had Moses. He had Elijah and Elisha. He had Jeremiah, Isaiah, on down to John the Baptist being the last of the prophets. John did not, was not schooled nor educated. He went to the wilderness at the age of nine years old and was in the wilderness with God, come out with a message that shook the nation. And then come the final and great witness, Jesus Christ. And each of these messengers and witnesses of God was rejected by man. Did not Jesus say, which of your fathers has not stoned the prophets and persecuted those who God has sent? Did not he say, you whited walls, you certainly garnish the prophets' tombs and you are guilty of putting them in there? God's witnesses, stone sawed asunder, fed the lions, all kinds of persecutions. Jesus spoke of the same thing in the parable of the orchard. They sent one servant and they run him out. And finally he sent his son and they killed the son. But someone has to be a witness. God being just, he cannot put punishment upon a people without showing mercy. Righteousness requires that. God's holiness requires judgment, and judgment would not be judgment without it had mercy to it. And God always sends mercy. And when mercy is spurned, there's only one thing left, that's judgment. No, may I stop here just a moment to say, 
that I believe that these nations are now getting their last mercy call. Amen. I believe it. I'm on record and on tape for saying that. But I believe it with all my heart that there's not a person on earth who could ever shake this thing back to its conditions again. It'll take the move of God, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Look at the indifference in the people today. Look how unconcerned they are. Eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Just as it was predicted. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. The Bible said, from such turn away. Very religious. They've always been very religious. But not having the spiritual insight to understand. That's the main thing. That's the thing that designates your eternal destination. Is your spiritual conception. What if Pharaoh would have known that the emancipator of Egypt he was sending him out into the desert and chasing him. It would have been different. But he didn't have the spiritual understanding that Moses had. Nor could he understand the attitude that Moses taken. For why would this man with the world at his hands would reject it and walk out into the desert with a bunch of disobedient people? Why, he was considered a fanatic. A quack. And tens of thousands no doubt laughed at him. But his conviction of his spiritual insight that by faith he saw the promise of God. And then when Jesus stood on the earth, he was the greatest witness that God has ever had. For the fullness of God was in him. And when he began to do the works of God, they said unto him, He is Beelzebub, the devil. Judging the Spirit of God that was in him, a devil performing miracles. And Jesus said to them, If Satan cast out Satan, then he's divided against himself. People credit Satan for being smarter than what he is. He cannot be divided against himself. If you're divided against yourself, how can you exist? You cannot. Neither can Satan. So after the great discussion there, he told them if they spoke against him, it would be forgiven them. But the Holy Spirit, which would come as a witness of Him, to speak against it would never be forgiven. Then He brought in different ones of the faith that had gone on. And He said, The Queen of the South shall rise in the day of judgment and shall condemn this generation because she came from the utmost parts of the known world to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And I say unto you that a greater than Solomon is here. Now Solomon's age that he was referring to was the millennium for the Jews. It was a golden age, as historians know, for the Jewish people. Solomon was a foretype of Christ in that he built the temple and so forth. And then in that age, God gave Solomon a gift. And all of Israel recognized that gift. And all Israel prospered under the reign of that gift. But if they had not believed that gift that God sent through Solomon, 
then they would not have prospered. They wouldn't have recognized it. And they, when God sent this great marvelous gift, all Israel flourished. And they become the mighty nation of the earth because they recognized the gift of God that was in Solomon. Everyone with one heart and one accord was testifying of this great gift not of the great Solomon, the great gift in Solomon. It's not the holy people, it's the Holy Spirit in the holy, in the people. Not the holy church, but the holy God of the church. As Peter referred, the holy mountain, it was not the holy mount, it was the holy God that was on the mountain. And Solomon was just a man that God had foreknew and had given him a great, wonderful gift. And when Israel saw that it truly was the gift of God, every one of them rallied to him. That's what made the revival. And the news got scattered out all over the world. People coming by would say, Oh, you should see what the great God Jehovah has done to His people. Why, they raised up a gift up there. God has sent a man named Solomon. And oh, all the nation believes in Him. And his gift works wonders. And it calls all the nations to begin to listen. Faith cometh by hearing. And all rallied around this great gift. And finally weighed down in the farthest part of the known world a place called Sheba. There was a little queen down there. She was a pagan, a heathen. But as man passed by telling her, you should see what's going on up in Israel. They have a gift from God up there. And oh, that gift is wonderful. You should see it in operation. She began to wonder. The next one come by, Oh, we stopped in on our journey somewhere else, Queen. But we have just come through Israel. You should see that wonderful gift. Well, it began to dawn upon her heart. For faith cometh by hearing. And when she heard of this great gift, something begin to create in her heart that she wanted to see if it was the truth or not. She wanted to find out for herself. She wasn't satisfied to sit at home and be satisfied around her own idols. She wanted to go see for herself. And she made up her mind that she would not go critically. Many people going to see a gift of God operate, they make up their mind before they get there that they're not going to have anything to do with it. One night settles it. It's reason they get nowhere. That's what they did about the Lord Jesus. But this little queen made up her mind that she was going to see it through. And she made preparations to go see this great gift, to see if it was the truth or not. And if it was the truth, she would stand by it. If it wasn't the truth, had nothing to do with it. That's a good way to think about it. That's the right approach. Come find out. 
Man can make claims of anything. But it's a different story when God testifies that that's the truth. And then, of course she had critics. The people would say to her, no doubt, do you mean that you're going up there to some fanatic, emotional, mental workup like that? But something in her heart began to tug at her that she must go and see for herself. Now, coming to God is not an easy thing, as you would think it would be, as people try to make it to you. Oh, well, go on, just anyway, join the church. That's a story of the devil. It's a great price to pay. Salvation's free, that's right. But you've got a lot to get rid of first. Now, she had difficult in the way. The first was with her people. They would criticize her and would probably excommunicate her from their fellowship. But when God is moving in the heart of an individual, there's nothing in the world that can keep them away from Him. God moves in mysterious ways. Something had struck that little woman's heart. Now the next thing she did, do, could you realize what that woman had before her? She had three months of desert road to travel on the back of a camel. Three months over the burning sands of the desert. She had a price to pay. And another thing, being a woman. And all that travel. And also in the desert at that time, the sons of Ishmael was there. And they were robbers. And the woman had made up her mind that she wasn't going empty-handed. And she loaded camels down with wealth. She brought frankincense, gold, silver, myrrh, perfumes, the greatest that there was in her kingdom. For she thought this in her heart. If it was of God, she wanted to give God the best she had. Amen. And if this Christian church today would only think that in their heart the God of heaven deserves your best of everything that you have, the best of your time, all your devotion, and everything that you are, you owe it to God. Amen. We give God just maybe a few minutes on Sunday, sit and go to sleep while a Sunday school teacher is teaching. Go home and think we've done our religion for the week. What a disgrace! I know I got a name of being hard. I'm not hard. But what it is, I've got to stand in the judgment with each one of you. Tomorrow morning, this tape recorder would cry out everything that I said. And if there's a little tape recorder here, to cry out the things that I say tonight, what will it be at the judgment bar when God's great tape recorder of my life turns on? And your recorder, and the world recorder, and the great television screen that's on the sky, and your life is before God in the entire world. I'd rather be right here now and be honest If God is God, He's worth everything you are. If Christian religion is right, it's worth everything that you can do for it. To support your church, support your pastor, support your missionaries, 
Do everything that's in your power to do and give God the best you've got. That little heathen said, If that is a God who's raised up this mighty gift, then he is God. I'll give him a gift to the best I got. And she loaded these camels with gold and frankincense and myrrh and silver, many precious things. Now, she took a little band of man with her. They wouldn't have been a handful. They wouldn't have been a half hour's battle with that great massive group of the Arabs on the desert. If they know she was crossing there with all this wealth, they would have rode in and massacred the group. But she thought this, if it is of God, then God surely will take care of me on the road. I love that kind of faith. If it is of God, put your soul at His hands and move forward. He'll take care of you. You don't have to worry. He'll see that you arrive all right. No matter what your neighbor says and what this one says and says you're a sissy because you've become a Christian, don't you notice that? God gave the call. God's obligated to see you through. Believe you. And away she went. Now she didn't cross in an air-conditioned Cadillac, but sitting on the back of a camel. Finally she arrived at the gate. Now she didn't come just to stand one night in the revival. She come to spend or to stay until she was thoroughly convinced. Some people come to a healing service. Say, well, if I get a card and get in line the first night, all right, if I don't, well, I've got to go back. There you are. Well, I went over last night. I guess that's enough. I don't have to go no more. She come to see the thing through. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord for that type of faith that's determined determined not to be defeated, then you're sure. She unloaded the camels. She put up camp out in the courts. And she said, I'll watch for myself. I've heard of this great discernment that Solomon has that comes from God. She says, Jehovah God, if that be the truth, then I've got all these gifts plus myself. And my kingdom I'll give to him. If it's truly, but I want to stay till I'm convinced. And the next day when Solomon came out into the courts and was set on the seat and the meeting began, she was astonished to see the wisdom and discernment in that man. She stayed for many days. And after it was all over and she was thoroughly convinced, she went and unloaded her camels and all of her goods and gave it to the cause of Jehovah. And she said, all that I heard is true and it's greater than I have heard about. She come with an open heart. She presented herself before that gift of God humbly, and God made known to the queen. And in that act, Jesus Christ told sanctified priests, great religious teachers, rabbis, bishops, popes, whatever you want to call them, said that little queen will rise up in the generation and the judgment and will condemn in this generation for she came from the utmost parts of the world to hear the wisdom of Solomon and here was a son of God discerning the secret thoughts of their heart and you say I am Beelzebub 
said, that little queen will rise in the day of judgment and condemn this generation. Brethren, Jesus gave us a solemn warning that the sign would be given of the resurrection of his being as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. It was to be a, a perpetual sign to all ages and all generations that He died and rose again, and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I wonder today that as God has sent His gifts, His servants, into the world and without a shadow of doubt is performing and doing the things that he did before he was crucified as a witness to this province, to this nation, to this people, that he is the same Jesus Christ who raised from the dead as Jonah come from the belly of the whale and the people flatly turn it down and walk away from it. What will happen in the day of judgment? For I say unto you that a greater than Jonah is here. I say unto you that a greater than Solomon is here. Who is it? The resurrected Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here. And doing the things that he promised he would do. It would behoove every one of us, while these meetings are going on and these blessings are flowing, to do everything that's within us to get every person here and do everything that we can to get our loved ones saved and in the kingdom of God, for we don't know what time that we're going to be called to answer it, that judgment, at the coming of the Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God of heavens and earth, you are righteous, Lord. Noah preached 120 years and was scoffed at. Others has preached through the ages, the prophets. Jesus preached before the great destruction. Martin Luther in the First Reformation, John Wesley, Sankey, all Finney, Moody, down through the age, and here we are at the evening lights, and you're still God, and you still got witnesses in the earth. The gospel's being preached all over the nations. Signs and wonders are following. Oh, God, awaken the people quickly before total annihilation strikes, and all as long as there is an age, from everlasting unto everlasting, there will never be another chance or a sermon preached. God, men and women in here tonight may be receiving their last call right now. I pray that you be merciful unto them and save them and let them know that your God of heaven who raised up your son from the bosom of the earth as you did Jonah from the belly of the whale and you're here tonight manifesting your love and spirit and gift to the people. I pray in Christ's name. And while we have our heads bound over this audience, I just wonder if there would be a one person here that would raise up your hand and say by raising your hand to God, God, remember me. I am deeply in need of your grace. And I want to now raise my hand to Christ and say, be merciful to me, a sinner. Will you raise your hand? God bless you, sir. Would there be another? God bless you, sir. I see your hand. God bless you, sir. All right, in the balconies to my right. God bless you. God bless you, son, up there. God bless you, lady. Someone in the balconies to the rear, would you raise your hand and say, Be merciful to me. I, I, my eyes, God, anoint my eyes and let me see, please. I don't know what time that my heart's going to cease. I don't know when's going to be my last breath. I'm walking on brittle threads. The brittle threads of life, maybe before the night's over, 
I'll scream for the doctor and he'll shake his head and say, it's over now. Nothing more can be done. He's gone or she's gone. A little friend of mine, his little girl playing out in the yard, eight years old, day before yesterday, just as healthy and lovely as she could be a sweet little child, felt real ill. He rushed her to the child children's hospital in Louisville, Kentucky, died an hour later, spinal meningitis. You don't know what minute, how young, how old, death's coming to all. Balcony's to my left now. Would someone there raise your hand and say, by this, you're not raising your hand to me. You're raising it to God. Say, God, be merciful to me. I need you. Be merciful. Pray for me, Brother Branham, as I raise my hand. Would you do it? All right. God bless you there, sir. God bless you, lady. God bless you, honey, the little girl. God bless you over there. That's wonderful. Now, all over the audience in the bottom floor here, somebody else would raise their hand who has not. God bless you and you and you, sister, and you, brother. You back there, sister. God, be merciful to me. I need you, Lord Jesus, just now. What have you done when you raise your hand? You've defied every law that science has. According to gravitation, your arms are supposed to hang down. But when you raise your hand up to the Creator of heavens and earth and your Creator, you defy the laws of gravitation showing that there's a spirit in you that's made a decision. I now raise my hand, defy all laws of gravitation and everything else because the Creator that spoke to my heart as my soul has made a decision that I love Him and I raise my hand to Him to be merciful to me. If I know my Bible right, Jesus said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall never come into the judgment, but has passed from death to life. That's the difference. Would you, by a decision in your heart, raise your hand towards God and say, I now accept him. God bless you, brother. That's God bless you, sister. That's wonderful. That's about 20. God bless you, my brother. Over here, that's another one. What does it do? God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. That's just all. You know what happens? If you take my word as God's servant, and here's God's word to back it up, a minute you raise your hand, if you mean that from your heart, you pass from death unto life. God bless you back there, brother. I see your hand back here in the middle aisle. That's good. Just let him speak to your heart. God bless you over here, young lady. God be with you. God bless you there, young man. God be with you. you. God bless you back here. I see you, brother. Surely God does. You pass from death unto life. Listen to the words of Jesus now. He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting, that's eternal life, the Holy Spirit, and shall never come to the judgment but hath, past tense, passed from death unto life. Why? Because you believed on the Son of God and accepted Him as your personal Savior. I know, the Methodists used to say you got to shout before you got it. But there's a lot of them shouted and didn't have it. The Pentecostals said you got to speak with tongues and then you've got it. A lot of them spoke with tongues and didn't have it. That's right. But Jesus Christ said, He that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath it. That's it. Your faith looks to God. God seals it back by the Holy Spirit. Your life proves what you are by your fruits you're known. That tells whether you meant it or not. For anyone, the fountains open to whosoever will. Now, would there be another before we offer prayer for these? Over the building, anywhere. One that has not raised her hands, making this decision, this final decision. All right, let us pray for those now. Heavenly Father, I'm most sure that we have found grace in your sight tonight. As the hands of men and women has went up and even to little girls, 12 and 13 years old, raising their hands, asking for your mercy. Oh, God, be merciful to them. That's the fruits of the message, and I present them to you now that you will keep them in your grace until the day that they are presented before God in Christ Jesus without fault, without blemish, 
and have eternal life and live through the, all the ages that is to come. Grant it, Father. And now, through them who are newborn babies, just come to the kingdom, which your word can never fail. It's truth. It cannot fail. And now, Father, to them, the newborn babes, let them have a witness tonight, a double witness. May you come on the scene, great power and manifestation, and show your great power to them in showing that you are the same Jesus that stood there at Galilee that was condemned because you discerned the thoughts and spoke this word that did not also this great Solomon discern the spirits of man? And you said a greater than Solomon is here, and there will be a perpetual sign, the resurrection, that you'd be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Manifest yourself, O God of heaven, and let this people know that their, their real faith in Christ is not in vain. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. If I'm not mistaken, I believe I see my old friend, Brother Dawson, sitting here in front of me in a wheelchair. I thought I recognized you last night, Brother Dawson. God be merciful to you, my gallant brother. You've had a stroke or something, I believe you wrote and told me. I pray that God will make you well, Brother Dawson. If your brother had any power within myself, I'd come right to you now. That would be the last minute you'd sit in a wheelchair. I do not have the power, Brother Dawson. But the Jesus that has the power is here. Look and live, Brother Dawson. You as a Bible student, as a scholar, to the brass serpent in the wilderness, the people looked and lived. That was a type of Christ. And if the type healed him, what will the antitype do? If the brass serpent made likened unto the Son of God, who has made sin, the serpent, emblem of sin, brass, the judgment, if looking at the serpent they live, what am not looking at the Christ they live? Now look tonight, Brother Dawson. I see down through my audience here, there's wheelchairs, stretchers. As the crowds grow, I hope they do. If you get a massive of people together of believers, you get a massive burst of faith. I seen a few nights ago in the audience at Tacoma, Washington, an arena about like this year, and thousands of people packed in there, and I seen a little blind Indian boy that the Holy Spirit went out into the audience and told those people their names, where they come from, who they were, and challenged that mother to bring that little blind Indian who fell out of his little cradle when he was about three months old and plucked both eyes completely out, been totally blind, he was about 12, 14 years old, brought that little man to the platform, and there Almighty God gave him perfectly his sight, walked off the platform, sat down, walked and got his drink and everything around the place just glorifying God. Is there anybody here who was at the Tacoma meeting to have seen that? I know, of course, the manager and them is here to see it. There's some way back in the audience, many of them there to see it. Yes, sir. A little blind Indian boy. Not something what well, shook the country, see? Not some makeup, but an absolute. I remember Congressman Upshaw setting us about like Brother Dawson is tonight. Been in that condition for 66 years. Congressman in the United States government for 17 years. Walked into a big audience like this, and they just rolled the man into the back of the place. I never heard of him in my life. And there the Holy Spirit even told him what he'd done and how he felt and all about Now God knows, never heard his name, and said, Congressman, thus saith the Lord, you're healed. And he sprung from his chair, run to the platform, and touched his feet at 80-something years old and stood on the White House steps and sang, leaning on the everlasting arm. Ted went to Churchill in England and a good friend of his and testified of the power of God to heal the sick. Brethren, Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now we're going to pray for sick. And I, after this is over, after we pray for the sick, 
I want to ask those who raised their hands, some 20 or 30 people, sinners that wanted to be saved. I want you, after this is over, the praying for the sick, I want you to walk right down here at the altar and stand here and offer a word of thanks to God for saving your soul. I want you to do that before the audience. For Jesus said, He that will, will deny me before man, him will I deny before my Father. And he who will witness before man, him will I witness before my Father. I want you to do that immediately after the healing service. You've already accepted him. You've passed from death unto life. But I want you to come up here as a public confession as Jesus is your Savior. And I'm sure if you meant that from your heart, you'll not be ashamed to do that. Now, last night, and in the nights of the meetings, and as the time rolls on now, we're going to try to be out in a few minutes. The meeting is not based. Now, in a few nights, we're going to start running a big prayer line through here as soon as we get enough crowd in here to do so. But while we're here now, we're trying to get into the people's heart, if God willing, the basis of divine healing. Now, God still sends gifts. How many believe that? Well, sure He does. And if you recognize it, search it through the Scripture, see if the Scripture says so. If the Scripture says so, and then you see that in operation, you're just as guilty before God as the ones was when Jesus is here in flesh. More guilty. Because they had never seen the Son of Man. But now he's been on earth and his, his testimonies are history and prophetic. And here he is back again in the form of spirit doing the very same things that he did. See? Now you're guilty if you don't believe God. Accept him. Have faith. Now I believe Billy told me a while ago that they give out a hundred cards of these. Last night, where did we call? From one to... Started from one last night, didn't we? One to fifteen. All right, let's take the last part of them then tonight. Let's take then be eighty-five to a hundred, and maybe tomorrow we might start somewhere else. We don't know where. Just see, so that everybody we used to give out cards, we start from one, just keep one going on. One, two, three, and five, and on up to twenty-five, fifty, and all like that. And if they get a card, and it was anywhere under twenty-five or thirty. They throw it on the floor. Or they didn't want it. I'll never be called there. But now you don't know where it's going to be called. Then I said, well, we call the prayer line. I let some little child stand up and count. More he stopped counting, there's we call a prayer line. Believe it or not, mothers had their little boys and girls up there to stop on their number. <laughs> so we're still dealing with human beings. So then the man who give out the prayer cards don't know where the line's going to be called from. Nobody else knows. When we get here and wherever comes on my mind, I just start from right there. That's just. It's the way that the Holy Spirit told us to lead it. That's way, and that doesn't have anything to do with your healing. You coming on this platform don't mean one thing about your healing. It only means that the audience can have the same blessing as the man or woman standing right here. It's a sign that Jesus is the living and sure to bless us and give us His promise. How many understands it that way? Thank you. All right. Was that B or E? 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 85. Who has that prayer card then? The lady up in the balcony. All right. Lady, come down here. 86. Would you raise your hand? Prayer card 86, would you raise your hand? 86, who is it? It's got prayer card 86. Would you, would you raise your hand high so I can see? Somebody's pointing out in here, but I don't see no hand. 86. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, lady. All right, come over here. 85, 86, 87, 88. Quickly now, stand. all right, 89, 89, all right, lady, 90. Someone see a hand, 90. Prayer card, 90. Look at your neighbor now. It may be somebody. I see white canes laying on the floor here. Here's a blind man sitting here. Look at his card. Is that 90, sir? Look at his card and see if it is. It is. All right. Look at somebody. Look back there. Somebody look at the wheelchairs back there. Some of those people uh, maybe can't raise their hands. Find out they got... Here's someone laying over here perhaps can't raise their hands. Somebody just look to them. Raise up. Be generous enough to go see if they've got prayer card 90. 90. Do you, uh, the lady found it. Somebody that's probably laying on a bench or something there. Maybe ill. All right. 90. 91. Who has 91? Would you raise your hand? 91? 
All right, you miss your turn. 92, 93, 94, 95, there's three missing already, 96, 97, 98, 99, and 100. Let those come out first, if you can. Now, if anybody's got those cards, look over at them. And if they got those cards and can't get up, someone bring them. If they're deaf and can't hear, bring them. See, so they won't miss their number. Now, you hold your cards because we're going to call for them sooner or later. When you get your card, you hold on to your card. And we'll call for them. We'll start them in a prayer line as soon as we get a group enough people in here to justify that type of line so we can just bring them through and pray for them. We'll do that. But now we're trying to, to have the Holy Spirit, if He will, manifest Himself in a manner of a gift so that your faith will be anchored that you'll know beyond a shadow of doubt. All right. If, uh, just a moment now, being in preaching like that. Will you play for us, brother? The great physician now is near. Someone was telling me that today, is that the same man that dropped from the stool last night? If the man will call to memory when I passed by last night, he looked at me and smiled, and I patted him on the shoulder. I knew that he would need some encouragement in a little bit. And when he heard the Holy Spirit reveal the very thing that was in his own heart, he fainted and fell from the stool last night. That's a, he believed it. He's seen the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the very position he's playing about now is right here in this building tonight. You're part of his heritage. Believe him. Have faith in him. Don't doubt. Have faith in God. All right. Billy, where's the... How many have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're short somewhere. It's fifteen in that line. Supposed to be. Now you got a number. E eighty five until one hundred. Okay. Three missing. If they're here or if they just stepped out. You come and see my boy over here, and they'll put him in the line if they're just stepped out. 91 is missing. Prayer card 91 is missing. Now, when you come and get a card, stay at your post of duty until you're prayed for, see? Don't, because see what the interruption it gives? All right, stay with it when you come and get your prayer card. If you don't, give it to, let someone else get it. It's going to answer the call, see? Stay with it. All right? Now, everyone, real reverent, be just as quiet as you can for the next 20, 15, 20 minutes. Now, how many is here for the first time? There's not a person in this audience out in here except Brother Dawson there that I know. Is everybody in a prayer line? I'm strangers to you. If I'm a stranger to you, raise up your hand. If I... In the audience, strangers, raise your hands. Now, how many that does not have a prayer card that you want God to heal you? Let's see your hand. All right. Now, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday day and forever. A woman touched his garment and went out into the audience, and he turned and recognized that something happened and called her out. Is that right? If he's the same, he'll do the same. The Bible said he's the high priest that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Believe now. And now, here is a woman standing here that I have never seen in all my life. She's a total stranger to me. That's true as this Bible is laying here before me. I'm strange to she and she's strange to me. We've never met in the world. I have not a bit more idea what that woman's standing there for than, than uh, any other stranger to her would know. I do not know. But I'm sure this one thing that God knows. And the woman that came to the Lord Jesus or came to the well, the, this is for the newcomers. Here's a scene again, a man and a woman, just like at the well. Now, what did a Jew say when Jesus performed a miracle on him by telling him where he was before he come to the meeting? How many remembers that last night? Nathaniel. And Nathaniel 
said, how did you know me, Rabbi? I said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Is that what he said? He said, you're the son of God. You're the king of Israel. That's what the Jew thought about that. Now, what did the religious Jew think about it? He said, it's Beelzebub. I've just got through preaching about it. The devil, fortune teller, telepathy. Then he went up to the Samaritans and he met a woman just like this this year. And he said to the woman, bring me a drink and... St. John 4th chapter, and they began to talk a while, carrying a conversation. The father sent him up there. You know, he was on his road. How many knows he was on his road to Jericho? And Jericho's just below Jerusalem. But he had need go by Samaria. The father sent him up there. He said, I do nothing till the father shows me. St. John 5, 19. I do nothing until I see the father do it first. That's what he said. And the father sent him up there. And he talked to the woman till he found out what her trouble was and told her. Is that the truth? And when he told her where her trouble was, she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. And we know that when the Messiah cometh, which is Christ, he'll tell us all things. But she didn't know who he was. He said, I'm he that speaks to you. How many knows that's true? If that was a sign of the Messiah to the Jew... To the Samaritan, what would it be to the Gentile if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? It'd be the same. Is that right? The same. Now, that's the sign that I spoke of tonight. The gift that he promised he would send to the earth. Now, what are we going to do about it? Now, if it don't work, then I'm a false prophet. If it does work, I've told you the truth, and Jesus Christ is alive tonight. That's right. There's a showdown. Any person here that wants to take my place is perfectly welcome to come right now. Wants to come and take this prayer line. Any minister, rabbi, bishop, whatever you might be, you're welcome. Now, I don't know the lady and she knows me not, but God does know us. And then if the Lord Jesus, through a divine gift, will make known to this woman what she's here for, if she's a critic, it'll tell her. If she's a Christian, it'll tell her. If she's sick, it'll tell her. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but if it will tell her, how many in here will say, it will encourage my faith, and it'll make me a better believer. It'll make me want to, to tarry for the kingdom of God more than I ever in my life. Let's see your hands to God. You'd say that. All right. Now, I do that. Why don't you say, Brother Bram, what makes you do that? I'm trying to find favor with God that God will do it. You see, I don't know that he will. If he doesn't, I'll just make a congregational prayer and get in the car and go home, wait till tomorrow night. I don't, he's never failed me yet because he commissioned me years ago to do it. And he told me it would come to pass, and I told you that when I was here before. Now it's come to pass. It just doesn't go with the Anglo-Saxon people. They're too smart, know too much. One meeting like happened here last night, I had one meeting like that in South Africa. Uh, Brother Tom's this year offered a congregational prayer and they took seven van loads of crutches and wheelchairs and things off the ground and 25,000 people was healed at one time. And 30,000 raw heathens came to Christ and busted their idols on the ground like a dust storm. That's right. 25,000 healed and 30,000 recorded decisions for Christ at one time. Well, on a prayer line with about four people got through it. And here we can struggle and go hour after hour after hour after hour. You'd say, well, suppose that's all right, I guess. See, that's the reason. That's the reason that Billy Graham, O. Roberts, A. A. Allen, all those great evangelists are not having success. The old pond sane through about every one of the fish she's done tuck out. That's right. She's ready and ripening for judgment. Just remember that this is the last hours. If you believe me to be a servant of Christ, you remember that's the truth. Now I make Christ confirm it. Now, Sister dear, after your preaching, usually in the meetings while Mr. Baxter used to do the preaching, I'd come right from a room. Nobody'd speak to me. I'd walk right to the platform. The prayer line would already be called, and I'd go to praying for the sick. It's more greater than now. I have to do my own preaching and everything. It just kind of turns you around. You know, you're anointed for preaching and then you turn right back and start on discernment. It kind of, it's a turnaround. But our congregations are small and I just try it and God helps me. Now, if Christ will reveal to me what you're here for, 
or something about you that, you know, if I come up here and say, lady, the Lord gave me a gift and told me if I get the people to believe me and would pray for them, be sincere, that he would heal their sickness. And I'd say, I'll pray for you, you're going to get well. You'd have a right to doubt that whether I was telling the truth or not. But now if God will come back and tell you something back in your life that I don't know, and you know I don't know it, then what about that? <laughs> That's different, isn't it? Yes. That's right. That's God who knows what has been, surely will know what will be. Is that true? It's true. Now, what am I doing now? Just to see what the Holy Spirit will tell me. Yes. If the audience still picks up my voice, the lady is dwindling from me. And I see her trying to go do something real shaky. She's extremely nervous. And she's, she's been to a, a doctor of some sort. And it's some kind of a, a lady's trouble, a female trouble. And that doctor, kind of a strong man, says that it's a fallen female glands. That's thus saith the Lord. That's exactly right. And you're up for an operation. And you've got something wrong in your back. I see him talking to you about a back like that. And he put his hands on your back like that. That's truth. Is that right? That's true. How would I see in the doctor's office what was taking place? It's God. Now, do you believe that his presence is here to help you and to make you well? Yes. To help you to live, sister? Yes. Does the audience believe that now with all their hearts? Now, what must we do? Not to heal the woman that doesn't lay in my power, and there's not a mortal under this earth can heal that woman. That has to come through Christ, and if she's got faith, Christ has already done it when he died at Calvary. Healing is something, it's a finished work. How many knows that? By his stripes we were healed. What can we offer for her faith? It's prayer. Would you come forward, sister? Blessed Holy Spirit, who's in our great audience now, how these newborn babies must feel to know that that one had tapped at their heart just a few moments ago and they accepted him as their personal savior by hearing the word. Now they see his mighty hand and power moving. Bless this sister, spare her life and give to her that what she desires. I ask with this church in Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. Go and be well now. How many believes that Christ lives, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Now, now the meeting begins. Now the anointing begins to strike. Now you out in the audience begin to look. Begin to live. Have faith. Don't doubt. Just have faith. Now I'm challenging your faith in Christ's name to touch his garment and see if he don't speak back to you. Say in your heart, Lord, it, I'm not a doubter, but I want to confirm this in my own heart. Prove to me tonight that that man has told us the truth. I hear it from the Bible, but we're living in such a scientific age and everything. So I don't know where I stand, but prove it to me. Speak to me. Let that man reveal to me. Let me tell you what's wrong with me. And then let that man speak using your... You use his voice as a vine, as a branch in the vine. And speak to me and see if God will do it for you now. Just try that once and see if God won't do it. Remember, in Christ's name I ask it. I see Christ touch a woman just now for her faith. The woman sat right here with a white hat on. She's praying right there, and God let that be me. If that's right, wave your hand, lady. There she see your hand up. You had arthritis. If that's right, wave your hand. You haven't got it now. It's gone from you. Amen. I've never seen that woman in my life. She's a total stranger to me. If that's right, lady, raise up your hand. I've never seen her, know nothing about her. God knows that's right. She touched something. She touched Christ, the high priest. Now, you do the same thing. Now, we're strangers to each other. I don't know you. You don't know me. But God knows us both. Now, if God... If the church of the days that I was preaching about condemned Jesus because he knew the secrets of their heart, discerned their thoughts, 
and said himself, I do nothing till the Father shows me first. Well, now you're here. I don't know you. don't know what's wrong with you. You might have tumor. You might have cancer. You might be, uh, I don't know what's wrong with you. But whatever's wrong with you, if God will reveal it to me, will you believe it and accept it? If you will, raise your hand. All right. I ever one reverend. As I asked you to look at me, it's just as Peter said at the gate of beautiful, said, look on us. And that means just pay attention to me, see. Now, there's something strange about the woman. She's not standing here for herself. She's standing for somebody else. Away from here. That's a brother. And that brother is in a city. It looks like an American city. You're going from the west, going east is a big building. Is a right as you go into the city, you kind of drop down over a little hill. And there's a big auditorium, something like a Masonic auditorium or something. I see him pass. The man has got heart trouble and lung trouble. And he's in a place, I see, F-L-I, Flint, Michigan. That's exactly right. And he's your brother and you're standing for him. That's right. Is that the truth? You believe Christ will answer prayer? Let us pray. Oh, Christ of God, I pray that in Jesus' name that you will answer prayer and will send your spirit tonight and will grant the desire of this little woman's heart. In Jesus Christ's name I ask it. Amen. God bless you, my sister. May he grant to you that request. And in your hand you've got a handkerchief. Send that handkerchief to the loved one. Yes. Send that handkerchief to your loved one. What'd you think about it, sir, sitting out there on the end? I seen you watching that lady so carefully. It happens to be that that light's hanging over you. The elderly man sitting on the end. <coughs> oh, you have many things wrong with you. You've had a stroke. Raise up your hand now. You had prostate trouble. You had a lot of things wrong. You had an operation and everything, but it's no good. But you was believing that lady passed by and desiring that you'd have the same thing. That's right. Now raise up your hands again. Stand up on your feet. Now the stroke's gone. You're healed. Your prostrate trouble's over and you go home and be well. Your faith made you whole. You believe the Lord? Just have faith. God in heaven understands. Here's a young man standing before me I've never seen in my life. I guess we're strangers to each other. God knows us both, doesn't he? Sir, if I could do anything for you and would not, I'd be a hypocrite, right? I can't do nothing for you because I'm just a man like you are. But there's something here, the God that we're going to stand before at that day. God is everywhere. He feels he don't have to come because he's already here. He's just everywhere. But if God will reveal to me what you're here for, will you accept Christ as your uh, propitiation? You will. Now, I believe all of them's been women up to this time. Here's a man like Philip who went and found Nathaniel and brought him to a place and before Jesus, and Jesus told him where he was before Philip called him. Now, we being strangers, if God will do the same thing, that means that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If God will do it, the audience, I believe, will be happy and will receive Christ. Headaches are terrible, aren't they? Science make... <laughs> that's what you have. Scientists, that's what you ask, wants me to pray for you. 
And you come here from somewhere else. And you're here in behalf of somebody else too. That's a brother. And he's crippled. And he's in some kind of an institution here. Mental institution. And you're praying for him. And you come from a small city. It's got a place, a little sign in the middle of the street says, Mile Zero. You're from Dawson Creek. That's right. You have a business there. That's exactly something like a welder or something like that. A see with dirty clothes on. That's the truth. That's thus saith the Lord. Do you believe? Then let us pray. Blessed God, when the man so anointed with this great unction of God in his humble heart standing here, let thy eternal blessings rest upon him and his. Granted, Father, I send him, blessing him in Jesus' name to receive the desire of his heart. Amen. God bless you, my brother. You believe? Just have faith. Now, there's a woman appeared here. It looked like this lady, only it had a round hat on. Somebody touched the Lord Jesus. There, just a moment, it's with that man going. No, it isn't. It's this lady sitting right out here that's got skin trouble and praying for the Lord to make her well. Do you believe that God will grant it to you? All right, you can have what you ask for. Amen. God bless you, sister. You have a prayer card, do you? You don't have a prayer card. You don't need one. You don't need one. Your faith saves you, sister. You're healed now. God be with you. You believe he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever? Just get all... If you just break down that old starchy feeling among you, and let the Holy Spirit go to moving among you, you just see the cripples get up walking in a blind scene. The Holy... It couldn't keep from it. The Holy Spirit's here. You shut it out with unbelief, you see. With little suspicion, you think, is it? Could it be? You've heard so much false until this truth seems like false to you. Oh, what a pity that scholars has got people in. It would have been better if we'd never had one. That's right. That's an awful remark to make, but that's truth. We are strange to each other, my sister. I do not know you've never seen you. But I just imagine that hand that's holding that pocketbook has done a many days' work. God loves you. And if I could do anything for you and would not do it, I, I got a mother at home. And I'd be just as guilty as if I would insult and slap my mother. If I could do something for you, you may be somebody's mother, and if I could do something and wouldn't do it. I'd do everything I could to help you. God knows that. For healing, I couldn't do it. Money, I'm broke. I, I don't know what you're here for. But if the Holy Spirit, God, who's His glory and to fulfill His word, will come and reveal to me what you want Him to do, that shows and that He knows what you have need of. Is that right? He's doing it out in the audience, the people who will never be in the prayer line and so forth. People out there that just walked in and sat down. The Holy Spirit going there and picking them out and bring them in, heal them. See, isn't He wonderful? That's His presence with you now. That's what makes you feel that way. Is God's presence. He's just as real as he was the days when he stood at Galilee. You're here. I see there's something wrong like in the veins. It's a call, uh, what he called it, hardening of the arteries. That's right. Hardening of the arteries. And I see there's something wrong with your knees. Something about your knees. I see two different times that you've been operated on for those knees. <laughs> That's true, isn't it? Is that true? God always is true. God bless you, sister. Come here while you know that something is on you. It's the Holy Spirit. Accept Him right now as your healer. Blessed Father, oh, break down the cruelty of unbelief and give unction in the Spirit 
that people might see and know that you, you are here and you're manifesting yourself just as you did when you were here on earth in a physical body. You've come into our physical bodies. And anyone knows that it's beyond anything a man could do. It takes God and it's his spirit as he promised to move in our bodies as he did in the bodies, body of his son, Jesus. And we being his become sons of God and a part of that same spirit. The character, the works manifest the same thing that it did when it was in the carpal body of our blessed Savior. Bless this dear woman. When the secrets of her heart was made known, she just broke down. God bless her humble life and give to her whatever is wrong. I know not now, but thou does. And I pray that you will give her her desires. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, sister. I just a moment, as you started weeping, I just want to ask you something. Right now, the only way that I know what was told that woman is my boy here with this recorder. Every bit of that was true, was it, lady? Everything, whatever it was about doctors, about what you'd done or whatever it was, is ever bit the truth. If that's right, raise up your hand. It'd be totally impossible for me to know anything about that, wouldn't it? Outside of God. If that's right, raise your hands. Something's here then. You're close to him. He's right with you. Go believe him now and be well. Amen. You believe him? Of course, you see these men standing here. They're watching me. Each one of them. They've been with me meeting after meeting. They know that just a little bit of that, and I'm gone. You might not understand it, and there's no way for me to explain it. One woman touched the hem of the garment of the Son of God, and he performed just what he's performing now, and in that holy body, virgin born, it made him get weak. How many knows that? What would it do to me, a sinner, saved by grace? When it's many times double what it did that, why did it let me stand longer than it did him? Because it's his promise. The things that I do shall you also and more will you do. For I go to my Father. He's doing this to fulfill his word. At the judgment, you won't have nothing at all to stand on unless you accept him. That's right. You're simply without an excuse. How many knows that the great prophet Daniel, an angel followed him, and he had a vision, and so much strength went out of him till he was kind of beside himself for many days. How many knows that the Bible said that? Sure. Then why is God so good in this last days to do more than that? Because he promised it. That's his promise. His promise can never fail. Now, to this woman standing here, you notice... Passing through a line, just laying hands on the sick, that's different. But this way, I'll watch and find if there's any sin there to stop it. You better be careful what you do with the divine gift. We understand that. How many knows that Moses smote the rock when he shouldn't have done it? He's a prophet. He brought it anyhow. It broke the whole program of God. Any Bible reader knows that. Christ was not smitten the second time. He's smitten once and then speak to him after that. God told Moses, speak to the rock. How many knows that young prophet went bald-headed when he was just a young man? And them children run behind him, teasing him about being bald-headed. Say, thou bald-head, thou bald-head. And he turned around and put a curse on those children in the name of the Lord. And two she-bears killed 42 little innocent children before they got home. How many knows that's true? Now, that isn't the nature of the Holy Spirit. You know that, to kill little children. But that was an angered prophet. You have to be careful. Level. Oh, God, find grace in our sight. Now watch these things close. And I'll take anybody to charge, anywhere, at any time. You've never seen a person come here that was ever brought down like that, except something happened or told them why it couldn't happen. Anybody that's ever been in my meetings, if you know that's true, raise your hands. Been in my meetings before, anywhere. Just see the Holy Spirit would either... I'm, I'm, Never prayed a prayer in my life sincerely unless God answered it or told me why he couldn't. God is still God, friends. Now, this little woman standing here, I get, is this the patient? I don't know a patient. I just mean it's someone standing here. All right, lady. Now, this probably seven or eight people has went through the line. Now, 
This little lady here, are we strangers to each other? Yes. We are strangers to each other. Now, we do not know each other. Now, this could just go one by one, weaker, weaker, but the man soon get me because that I get weak. I got another meeting tomorrow night and another the next night, and then after this, this campaign, another, another. And you know what it does to you. Now, it's for your glory. It's for your admiration. It's to the glory of God also that you believe God. Now, when Moses was given a sign to perform before the people to do a miracle with his hands, turn a stick into a serpent, when he performed that miracle one time, every Israelite believed him and marched on to freedom. Is that right? Why do we have to have the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over? It's gross darkness, dark hearts, unbelief, Theology, psychology, everything else set into our minds, that's where we stand. All of us. Oh, we'll be a poor excuse at the day of judgment. Let this Spirit of God speak. A lady not knowing, I do not know her, she does not know me. But if God is God, which He's proved Himself to be, and this being about seven people has passed the platform, ought to settle it. If God will reveal I don't want the woman to think of anything that you might see that it's not telepathy. I want her to keep everything that's if she, wrong with her off her mind. Now, Master, before this audience, and the heavens know that I've never seen a woman in my life. As far as I know, she might have been sitting in the audience somewhere, but I don't know her. God knows that. But if God will reveal in her thinking about something else, if God will reveal what she's here for, how many will say, that'll settle it forever for me? Will you raise your hands to God and say, that'll settle it forever for me? If the woman raised her hands that I don't know her, I don't know you do, a lady. No. There we are before God that he could strike us right here on this platform. Certainly. We don't know each other. And friends, we're not here. This is not a show. This is the gospel being manifested according to a promise of God. Now, may he do it. And may you look and live and believe the same Holy Spirit is here, is out there. He covers everywhere. He's omnipresent. Now, since I looked at the woman, something's happened to her. I always want to say this to you. While you've been standing there, something has come to you. A real sweet, meek, humble feeling. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. If it is, raise your hand so they see. See? What's happened? In... If there's a scientist here, a little skeptical, I'm speaking of another dimension. That supernatural being, this picture that you see there, I guess they explained it. Here's George G. Lacey, the head of the FBI, is right up about it. That same angel of God is hanging right there over the woman right now. I'm looking right straight at it. It's circling around her. To talk with her a second, it'll break into a vision. It's right on her now, and that's what she feels. She felt it after she come here. She's got in contact with God. That's right. You realize that. Raise your hand, lady, if that's right. You should be standing here now. He's wonderful. He knows all things. He does all things well. This lady is suffering with a lady's trouble. It's a female condition. Drainage. It's right from the bathroom. You understand, huh? No one was there but God. That's right. And being that you're such anointed just now, there's somebody, a friend of yours, that's asked you to pray for them. And that's a lady. And that lady, friend of yours, has a stroke, I believe, is in bed with a stroke. And that woman is praying at this time. And I'll tell you what that woman is praying for right now as I see her. She's praying for a man or a boy. And that boy is her son. And she's saying, God save him from a drunkard's grave right at this time. He's an alcoholic. Thus saith the Lord. I challenge you to question him. That's true. Just 
come in contact with the real Holy Spirit and see if He don't know all things. Is that true, lady? Yes, it is. It's very true. She suffered with a stroke a week ago tonight or this afternoon. You hear what the lady's saying? There is a truth and something. You know that there's something supernatural here. Is that right? Amen, yeah. I know nothing about that. Something supernatural here. What do you think it is? Christ? Then you can have what you ask for. Amen. God bless you, sister. God be with you. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. All right. You want to get over the diabetes? Be made well? That blood condition leave you? Go on your road and rejoice and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Take a... You have a Lord. All right, sir, come here. You want to get over the stomach trouble and be made well so you can eat again? You believe that God will heal you and make you well? Go on your road and rejoice and say, Thank you, Lord, for healing me. God bless you. Have faith in God. You think God can heal that heart trouble, sister, and make you well? Do you believe it? Then go on your road and rejoice and say, Thank you, Lord. Right here, lady. If you believe God... You can go right on across the platform, have a good night's sleep, and that asthma will just go right on away from you. All right, go and believe him with all your heart. All right, sir. Diabetes is what you want me to pray for. You believe God will heal you? All right, go on your road and rejoice and say, thank the Lord for all he's done. You have a lady's trouble, which is female. You believe God will heal you? Then go on your road and rejoice and say, praise be to God. How many believes with all your heart? Do you believe also? Amen. Then go rejoicing, saying, thank you, Lord, and be made well. All right. Got a nervous condition. You had a long time since menopause struck you when you was a middle-aged woman. It's developed into a stomach trouble, Mother. Hard on you, isn't it? But go eat your supper now. Jesus Christ makes you well. Praise Let's say thanks be to God. Lord. Now, you've been thinking you're going to drop dead because he said you had a heart trouble, a murmur. That's right. That's just true, isn't that right? I go on your road and forget about it and be made well in Christ's name. You believe God? If thou believest, what about you people? Can't you look and live? What about you, ladies, sitting right there with the dark rim glasses on, suffering with arthritis? You believe that God will make you well? White coat on, sitting right back there looking right at me. You believe God would heal you? You do? Put your hand over on that little lady sitting next to you because she has a nervous condition that she wants to be healed of. That's right, isn't it, lady? Raise your hand. What about the lady sitting next to you? The young lady kind of has a yellow-looking color. Do you believe me to be God's prophet, lady? You believe that God would take them blood clots out of you and make you well? That's what you had. If it's that's right, stand up on your feet and accept your healing. In Jesus Christ's name, may you receive your healing. I challenge the faith of this audience to look to Jesus Christ and live. Do you believe it? Now, how many of you wants to receive Him as personal Savior? How many of you here a while ago, just before we call her again or pray for the sick, I want every person that believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and wants to accept Him as your personal Savior, come down here while this anointing is here. Stand around this platform so we can pray. All that raised their hands a while ago, move right out and come down here. Right here, if you want me to pray with you, move right out right now and come down here. God bless you. That's right. That's good. Raise right out and come down. Every sinner of soul, sin oppressed, come now. There's mercy with the Lord. Come from the balconies. Wherever you are, walk right down. God bless you, young lady. God bless you. That's right. Come right down. That's it. God bless you. My brother, come in here. You also. Here's a young man coming in a wheelchair. God bless your gallant soul, brother. Come right around this way with him, lady. I want to look right at him while we pray. Maybe God will heal the boy right here while he's coming, surrendering his heart to Christ. All right, someone else, would you come just now while we sing one verse, just as I am. Will you give it to me? I am without one plea. But that thy blood was shed for me because I promise how believe, O Lamb 
Listen, friend, while the music continues, why don't you come just now? You'll never be closer to him until you meet him face to face. How can we shut our hearts from such? If there's a sinner or a backslider here, God bless you, young couple, that come. God be with you. You may have done great things in your life, but that's the greatest thing that you've ever done. Walk up in the presence of Jesus Christ to accept him as your personal Savior. There's never a greater thing a mortal could do. Will you come? Backslider, you this cold and indifferent and treating Christ the way you have with your unbelief, won't you take your stand right here tonight while we sing just once more? Just as I am waiting not to rid my soul of one God to Oh!